Hello and welcome back. My God, 2025 has been a fruity little number, hasn't it? We've covered a lot on the channel this year. Let's be honest, some things slightly more flippant than others. But in this video, we're going to talk about the best NAS of the year. We are going to discuss the standout devices for one reason or another that I believe are just the pick of the litter. And now everything we're going to talk about today are solutions that were listed in 2025 for sale. We are not going to discuss things that are still in Kickstarter or Indiegogo or any of that. We're not going to talk about anything that was older than that. We're only going to talk about NAS devices in 2025. Skyhawk, they all fly. But of course, we are going to talk throughout the course of this on certain little things that occurred throughout the course of 2025 worth discussing. But before we go any further, it's less of a NAS, but let's talk about probably an honorary mention of the, this isn't really the best NAS, but definitely one of the most noteworthy things. It was Unify, Unify blowing out their NAS range and really starting to stretch their muscles in the world of NAS with their UNAS series. Going from, in 2024, just one solution, now rolling out four more. It looks like there's gonna be a bunch more to follow. Ultimately, right now, I don't know what the state of the NAS landscape is going to be for business users or even light home labs and Unify integrators. But if you don't already know about it, do take a moment to look into the Unify UNAS series because it's propagating fast and in a changing, you know, private server and private data ownership landscape. I think players like them and indeed you, Green, to a point are really starting to mix things up and make the slightly more complacent players in the market look over their shoulder and go, bloody hell, what's going on? But let's talk about the five best NAS of 2025. The Ustar WTR Max, for me, just changed the game in terms of what ready-built OS3 NAS solutions can be and the price point they're supposed to be. We are talking about a six hard drive, four M.2 NVMe, dual 10 GBE equipped, AMD server ready, ECC memory support in NAS solution. Now, again, I've reviewed it, check it out, it's linked below. But again, go over to Wendell at Level 1 Tech's video and Ray Dow's review, but not a review video for a better understanding about the diversity of this hardware and what it can and can't do. But what it stands for for me is, is a great solution that has challenged the price point, not only of turnkey NAS solutions for the likes of Synology and QNAP and more, but also DIY, because the sheer grade of hardware it rolls out with, and the cooling, by the way, the cooling on it is surprisingly great for its size, has genuinely changed the game. And I'm really excited to see how they follow up on that because the Ustar WTR Max is regularly out of stock. It is not an easy NAS to buy. Stock is currently more available, but you can just go to their website regularly and see that it has said our shipping times are behind. We're just playing catch up. Then with another listing on this video as well, having a similar issue, but the Ustar WTR Max is just a fantastic example of design, internal hardware, and meeting user expectations and demand, both in the home lab and potential turnkey community. And that, along with any operating system that you choose to use rocking on it pretty bloody well, with the odd shortfall, let's be honest, with an OS that's being built differently from the hardware manufacturer. But nonetheless, the WTR Max for me is one of the best NAS of 2025. At numerous points in 2025, I couldn't mention that Ustar without also mentioning the Minis Forum N5, a NAS that started to become a passion project for me personally with that lovely little in-joke on the review. Um, for other reviews, Server the Home did a fantastic benchmark and review on this alongside Jim's Garage or Garage, we'll let you guys decide. But the Minis Forum N5 in particular, that's the non-pro version, arrives at a bloody sweet spot. It's very similar in the CPU architecture to that 
that of the U-Style we just described, hence the comparisons. But it's the design that wins a lot of users over. It's that five bay and the removable base slot for maintenance. Minis Forum have taken that IP, that design towards their workstations and ran with it. And with further development, hopefully arriving soon, on that six times M.2 NVMe card being supported on both the Minis 4 and workstations and this, there's going to be scale up on this device. This is another system that has been regularly out of stock throughout the course of the year. The Pro Series version is good and it's rocking around between 800 and 1,000 nicker, but we have to acknowledge that the N5 standard is a phenomenal base in terms of what you are getting for 599 to 699. I've seen it even lower than that during Black Friday, and it rocks out with that same 8845 CPU. It rocks out with a decent amount of memory, an internal storage module, and it has its own operating system. This isn't OS3, although you can run it that way, but it arrives with its own NAS software on board. Again, I wouldn't call it the most mature, so it's there if you want to use it, or you can just flash that the storage module that it arrived with at 64 gig and just stick on your operating system of choice like that. Rocking out with 10 GBE, rocking out with 5 GBE, rocking out with a PCIe upgrade slot, rocking out with USB 4 connectivity. This thing has got it all going on. And it's Minis Forum's first bloody NAS. It's going to be really exciting to see in 2026 if what they can do when they take up with this and run with it. The B-Link ME Mini. What, like, where did that even come from? At the start of 2025, the B-Link ME Mini rocked out with an N15 CPU and six M.2 NVMe bays, a couple of 2.5 gigs and a heck of a unique design. Arriving at around the two to $250 mark, and again, depending on where you shop around, it's a little bit more than that in some places. This is an all flash compact system with a sub 10 to 12 watt power consumption when fully populated in idle. This thing, was bananas. Again, we've done our review, we've talked about it before. Again, recommended reviews. Uh, Jeff Geerling did an incredible review on it, along with Techno Tim and even Lawrence Systems. I was so surprised to see this featured on that channel as well when you think about the audience there. But this thing has been a phenomenon across the whole of YouTube and the home lab scene in general. So much so that when we talk about some of the brands thus far, We've discussed them looking at what they're going to roll out next. And this is one of the few brands that we can talk about it. When I was over in China, in Shenzhen, B-Link went through this entire portfolio plan because they saw how popular it was and are doubling down on, on the development towards more mini NAS systems. But nonetheless, none of this undercuts that the B-Link ME Mini N150 CPU, 12 to 16 gig of memory, and a little bit of EMMC storage included with it for your operating system of choice. They even rolled on with Linux on it if you wanted to with Ubuntu. There's just so much in this tiny little package, and somehow it doesn't even get that hot. I'm not going to call it refrigerator cold, but when you compare it against competitors that were released just around the same time, like the GMK Tech G9 with the same CPU and Turnkey NAS solutions like TerraMaster that rolled out with their N150 solutions in the second half of the year, the Beeling ME Mini has made a phenomenal impact. And much like the Ustar has changed what a lot of users in the OS3 ready-built DIY NAS sector consider good value for money. And it's one of the few solutions this year that I think a lot of people would struggle to build from scratch and meet the same price point. Anyone that's watched this channel will know that I've got a weird love affair with the LinkStation N series. More precisely for this entry, the LinkStation N2. Now, even if we break it down to brass tacks and only talk about value for money, which a lot of users that try to consider pre-built NAS solutions rather than building from the ground up, I'll say right now, for around 400 nicker, so again around $450, depending if there's a sale on in your tax, you are looking at an Intel N100 quad-core CPU combined with 16 gig 
of memory that can't be upgraded sadly, but still. Also with 10 GBE on the rear. Also with four M.2 NVMe bays. Also with two SATA 2.5 inch storage bays. And as if that wasn't enough, and with lovely LED lights knocking around and the whole thing being teeny tiny, it also arrives with an Unraid software license included. So if you look at the cost of an Unraid license that this is in arriving with, and you factor that into the price, this thing is crazy. Now, that CPU and the distribution of three times one or three times one, it's not gonna break anyone's world. Go to, uh, again, going back to Jeff Gillen, go to his uh, level two tech. This is still a really interesting device insofar as what you're getting for value for money. But then when you factor in the Unraid license, and you can use another operating system if you like, it's got a USB loader in there, popping that Unraid into the RAM. But for what you're getting, and again, as a unique proposition for data, there's nothing like it. And although we just talked about the B-Link ME Mini, that little six bay, which again, is lower in price, which is arriving with a newer generation CPU, but still you're gonna have to arrange your own software there. You're not gonna be able to use larger cap SATA drives, which are gonna be more affordable as well. That doesn't have 10 GBE when this does. And this is just a better tool for some users with the 10 gig NIC and a better throughput to match. Again, not ideal, it's an N100, and I wish they rolled out with a beefy one, even with the N355. But the Link Plus Link Station N2 is still for me one of the standout NASs of the year when we're looking at what we expect to get for our money. Now the Synology DS925, oh, I'm only joking, we're not doing a Synology this year. I wanna talk about this. This is the Unify UT2. Now, those that have followed the channel uh, throughout the course of this year, I mentioned passion projects earlier in the video. I'll say right now, this is more than just an as. It represents a different kind of user. Now, this is a two times M.2 NVMe NAS system. It's got 2.5 gigabit networking. It has got an eight, uh, an eight core or technically two four core ARM processor inside with eight gig of memory. It's got a couple of SD card slots there built into the back. It's got USB type C, USB type A. It's got USB power. The whole thing has got active cooling throughout, a one touch copy button, a whole complimentary NAS operating system that does pretty much everything except for virtual machines, although it does run containers and it has an app center and alongside that can be used in DAS mode. You can directly connect to it there. It also arrives with a mobile application that pretty much does the works as well. However, it's also got a battery. This system can be popped in your bag and used on the go. Now, who is that for? It's a good question and something we've tried to tackle on the channel a few times. This is a mobile NAS. This allows me to set it up, do my job, do my recording on the go anywhere in the world, take my memory card and then slot it inside and then automatically begin my backup operation. And then I stick it in my bag and go. Now I know you could probably do the same thing with your phone if you're recording on your phone. But if you're using a big hefty camera or a DGI and just removing the memory card, this allows me to take the memory card right at the end of the record, slam it inside this and start not only backing it up, but also synchronizing it with a connected USB drive, synchronizing it with a cloud space, synchronizing it with another NAS with hotspot connectivity. This supports Wi-Fi 6 as well as actually being used as an AP as well. If you have a bunch of people collaborating on the go at an airport, between shoots, at work, in a library, wherever, and you can run it from a USB battery pack or have up to two hours with the 2200 milliamp battery that's included inside. It is a mobile NAS. I am never gonna say it will stand up in terms of power or capability against any of the systems I've discussed today. However, in terms of flexibility, there's an end user case for this. And again, it's regularly on sale at around $499. Again, I think peak it was $599 and during Black Friday it went down to $399. But ultimately of all the devices I talk about on the channel, I've never seen any brand try to target a space between NAS and between DAS as well as these guys. 
speak to anyone that's ever had to do a, a shoot overseas and has had to record terabytes of data and then it's easier for them to stick storage on a plane and fly it than it is to try to upload it. This gives you a middle ground between the two where you can create multiple copies while doing other things and on the fly. But there you go. This has been the best NAS of the year 2025. We're going to be doing a few other videos. We're going through some of the smaller categories there. And I think Synology might make the cut in some of those because of that hard drive stuff. It just no way, no way. But thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching throughout the course of this year, of course. Uh, and the link in the description below is not only links to get hold of the devices I've talked about today, and I'll try, uh, but also I'll try and link to some of the other reviews and the other channels that have covered the devices that I've talked about today as well. So it's all there in the links of the description now. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, and if you were going to go and buy any of the devices I've mentioned today, and if you're going to use the stores listed below. That's really, really important. Please use those links in order to buy it. Doing so allows you, via no extra cost of your own, to support this channel via ad revenue, uh, uh, via sales commission, and just small affiliated links that we use with Amazon, B&H, AliExpress, and more. It's just an easy way to support creators. It's me and Eddie doing this. It's just us. And also, do take this merit and take this logic towards other channels as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.